What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the Samsung built Galaxy Nexus. I've had this phone in two formats for the better part of a month. I've had the GSM unlocked version I was using on T-Mobile and AT&T. Now I've got the Verizon carrier supported LTE model. There's been a reason that this video has been so long in the making. I wasn't sure what I felt about the phone. Some days I would absolutely love it. Other days, I'd want to throw it against a wall, which is a very unique experience for me when talking about a phone. So when you're dealing with a flagship Android device, people are going to be very skewed opinion-wise one way or another. Things like that I'm prepared for when you're talking about an Android device or an Apple device. Stuff like that just comes with the territory. I just wasn't sure what I felt about the phone, and I didn't want to put my name and Techno Buffalo's reputation on a review that I didn't believe in or a review that I didn't feel comfortable with. So I've had many, many, many hours using this phone, playing with this phone, testing the phone, letting other people use the phone, and I'm finally ready to share my thoughts with you. So let's go ahead and finally review the Galaxy Nexus. All right, so for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using Verizon's LTE version here. Uh, let me go ahead and remind you of the specs of the phone, then we're going to jump into the full review. Uh, it is running Android 4.0. It's the only device out right now that's running Ice Cream Sandwich, both tablet or phone, although by the time you're watching this video, uh, that may have changed. From a dimension standpoint, it's 5.3 inches by 2.67 inches by 0.37 inches on the thin side. Uh, weighs 5.1 ounces. The display is a gorgeous 4.65 inch display with a resolution of 1280 by 720. So it's a 720p display. Uh, it's, a, it's a super AMOLED panel. Battery 1850 milliamp hours, 1.2 gigahertz dual core, giga RAM, 32 gigs internal storage, uh, no support for micro SD on this device, 5 megapixel camera on the back with LED flash, you can shoot video in 1080p. They've got a 1.3 megapixel sensor on the front that can shoot 720p. Again, this is the Verizon version. A few differences between the Verizon and the GSM version. Uh, the battery on the GSM version is a little bit smaller at 1,750 milliamp hours. Uh, a little bit thinner at uh, 8.9 millimeters versus the 9.47. Uh, millimeters and from a weight standpoint it's also going to be a little bit lighter uh, GSM version is 4.76 ounces versus 5.1 on the Verizon guy and I'm gonna exhale that was a lot of specs alright so this video is going to be broken out into two parts in one video I'm gonna talk about the things I love about the phone and the things I hate about the phone and I'm gonna try and run through things a little bit quickly so it doesn't turn into a seven part video or a 40 minute long review Talk about the things that are really important. I've had a lot of time to spend uh, with this phone. So let me first talk about call quality. It was absolutely outstanding. On the Verizon model here, I had no issues at all in my well over 20 call tests. I had no drop calls whatsoever. When I was using AT&T and T-Mobile on the Pentaband unlocked version, had the same thing. Uh, I was able to maintain a very strong signal with no drop calls. Uh, speakerphone, and I always do this in my reviews, uh, is extremely loud, uh, about on the higher end um, of average for speakerphone, so you can hear what that sounds like real quickly as it goes ahead and calls Verizon's customer service. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. A little bit tinny, but uh, you know, it works okay. Um, so call quality is absolutely outstanding. There's been some issues with the Verizon model um, having some signal degradation, uh, or Verizon is saying is an issue with what it shows for service. I didn't have much of a problem with that. I did notice that I had uh, about one less bar of 4G showing versus other uh, LTE devices that I used. All right, so this is going to be a review uh, consisting of really two parts, ice cream sandwich and the Samsung hardware. Generally, I try not to focus so much on the operating system because mostly it's an OS that we've seen before, but this is the first time we've really seen ice cream sandwich. Um, so again, it's gonna be broken out into what I love and what I hate. And let's start with love. And there's a lot to love about this phone. And let's start with that absolutely gorgeous uh, screen. Uh, the the 4.65 1280 by 720 screen is absolutely outstanding. Uh, and you can see so much content on a screen that has that higher resolution. Let me go ahead and show you. So we'll jump on here to technobuffalo.com. We'll go ahead and go back a page and go to the main Techno Buffalo website. I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the much larger 4.65 inch screen on the HTC Titan with a resolution of 480 by 800. And you can see already the much more content you can see here on the Galaxy Nexus. 
I can see two and a little part of a third here. An article standpoint here, you can see one, two, three, four, and then a little bit's cut off because of that ad there in the middle. So you can see just a lot more content. You can also see how beautiful this display uh, actually is. It does have a little bit of that bluish hue that you get with uh, some AMOLED panels. Uh, the text is absolutely gorgeous and crisp, as you'd expect on a display of this resolution, especially a display of this resolution built by Samsung, uh, which is really known for building incredibly looking, uh, incredible looking panels. Uh, you're not gonna have any sort of pixelation no matter how far you zoom, and you may wanna do a lot of zooming on text because, because of that high resolution, font's going to look a little bit on the tiny side. So you can go ahead and zoom in as far as you can zoom you're never going to see anything there that looks uh, a little bit pixely. Images and video look absolutely beautiful uh, on here as well. You can see a quick example of a 1080 video I shot just touring my office. Not gonna do it that much justice here, um, going from camera to YouTube and depending on what you're looking at it, but it does look very, very pretty. So there's that. We'll go ahead and go back. We'll take a look at some of the images that are on here as well. Uh, images look absolutely gorgeous, you know, as you'd expect from a panel. Um, if you want to watch a movie or you want to show pictures of your kids or your dog, whatever you want to show, uh, you're going to have an absolutely beautiful platform to do it here. The screen here uh, is absolutely outstanding. And I can say that a million times, but this is probably one of the best looking screens uh, that I've ever had the privilege of testing. Um, so that is the screen. The other thing that I really love about this phone, or one of the many other things, is multitasking. Uh, I liked the way Honeycomb handled multitasking. I love the way Ice Cream Sandwich does it. That little button right down there, go ahead and hit that. And you've got what looks like a very familiar uh, Honeycomb-esque multitasking. You can select what you want. But to close applications, and this does close applications, I did state otherwise in a previous video, uh, it's really neat, you just swipe it off. Uh, reminds me very similar of, something reminds me of uh, WebOS we could swipe the cards off. Not only is it fun and satisfying, uh, it's also great to see what you've got open uh, and running. You can see all the stuff I had uh, here. So multitasking is extremely well done in Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, and that's really representative of a lot of the feel of Ice Cream Sandwich. It feels much more polished than in previous versions of Android. And so you're keeping up with that polish. I really like the native folders here. Obviously you could add folders via third-party plugins uh, before, but I love how it integrates with the operating system. Things just work really nicely and the ability to have folders without having to download another program uh, really just works out very well. I also like the almost instant pictures. There's almost no shutter lag here. So whenever you go through and take a picture, we'll go ahead and let it focus on that, hit the shutter button. It almost takes a picture instantaneously, which is really nice if you're trying to catch a picture of something moving, for instance, like your baby uh, or your dog when you wanna have that beautiful picture right away. Uh, Android did a really nice job, or Google did a really nice job of uh, having that translate to really quick pictures. So that's something else that I really enjoyed. I've also really liked the Android market. I've never been the biggest fan of the Android market in the past, uh, but the applications here are really growing. Uh, the redesign that Google has done has made it so much easier to use. Having Google Music plug in to the operating system it's absolutely tremendous as well. Uh, there are just a huge amount of great applications in here. Uh, whereas in years prior, there were some gems in the Android market and then a lot of crap. There's now a lot of gems and way less crap. Um, so if you're looking for a really good application, uh, you're gonna have a wonderful time perusing uh, the Android market. It's really blew me out of the water uh, with how far it's come over the past you know, eight months to, uh, to a year. So if you had an opinion before about Android market or how it fared in the app world, you're gonna to wanna to give it a shot again. That's not necessarily unique to the Galaxy Nexus. It's more of a statement on Android as a whole. So we'll go ahead and go back there. Uh, another thing that I really like and sort of a weird thing to like uh, is how the settings are done. I thought the settings were a bit clumsy in previous versions of Android. I really like how they're laid out here as well. Uh, the stuff you use the most is right up at the top, the personal. Um, you can choose your settings right there, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, data usage I really enjoyed, so you can go ahead and control the data that you're using. You can set it for uh, your cap, or make sure you don't go over. Uh, really handy in a sort of capped data world. On the layout here, it's something that I really uh, enjoyed. So another sort of showing how Google really went to give the user experience um, a bit of a makeover and an improvement. I also really like where widgets are located. Before, if you wanted to access widgets, you went to an open spot, you held down, and you go ahead and access them from there. Now you only have gallery, live wallpaper, and wallpapers. To access widgets now, similar to what we saw in Honeycomb, go ahead and scroll over from applications, and there are all of your widgets. This is probably a personal preference thing, but uh, I really liked having them here. It was very nice and easy to select, find when you wanted, select it, and then drag it to wherever you want it to be. 
no room on that screen, so it's not going to show up. Uh, I also really like the speed of this phone. Uh, it's incredibly fast, especially on LTE. And LTE on Verizon is just blazing fast. And there are a lot of people using it. You can see some of my speed tests here. Uh, 5, 7, 10, some of the recent ones uh, that I've run. Uh, it's just been very, very, very fast. So if you want to use this as a wireless hotspot and you're fortunate enough to get LTE where you are, uh, you're going to get really incredible speeds. Uh, app speeds as well have been really impressive as far as loading things and having things multitask. Um, the phone's been an absolute screamer. Uh, it really handles things very quickly. Uh, that speed, however, does not necessarily translate over to benchmarks. Uh, benchmarks have not been overly high. Um, so Quadrant, for example, I just tried to run right there. Uh, the score I got on Quadrant when I ran it the first time uh, was 1,387. And scores in there have really ranged from 1,387 uh, to about 1,600. So I haven't seen much higher than that. Um, that's also due, probably in part, to a lot of applications not being written for ice cream sandwich. So hopefully we'll see that score uh, improve. Well, that score doesn't mean very much. The end user experience is nice and easy and quick. Uh, and it certainly is here on the Galaxy Nexus. But in all fairness, I wanted to show you and tell you uh, what that score was. Uh, one of the things that I really thought I was going to hate about the Galaxy Nexus that I ended up actually really enjoying uh, were these soft buttons here at the bottom. I really thought they were going to be unresponsive and cumbersome and hard to hit. They're actually really nice and they work very well. Um, and they're extremely responsive. The haptic feedback is really uh, helpful. Uh, and they work just as well as regular buttons. Some issues I've had with other Android phones is that the physical buttons there um, go away. And you have to actually touch them to get them to back lit up and see where they are. So I like that these are always here. And I do like that they hide on some applications as well. So if you go to camera, for example, they disappear. And you've got three dots that show up right there. And if you tap the side, they'll show up again and take you back to where you want to go. Um, so if you're worried about how those home buttons were going to be, uh, don't. They actually work very well. Uh, if you're looking to get a device that might upgrade to Ice Cream Sandwich from a previous uh, gingerbread phone that obviously is going to have to have uh, either physical or capacitive buttons, uh, you will not have those three buttons down below. Uh, it's going to render your menu button a uh, bit useless in everyday use. Some applications will still take advantage of it, though. If you notice, there's only three uh, buttons here. I also really like the speech to text. I think Google did a really nice job with this. Go ahead and start typing. Uh, I'll give you a quick example of what that looks like. I tested actually in a um, go back there in a, a previous video, and it worked just very nicely. So I'll do a real quick test here. I am testing the speech to text on the Galaxy Nexus. We detect on the Galaxy Nexus. So it works pretty well. And it'll start actually showing the text as you're typing or as you're talking. And you can pretty much just keep going. And it works very, very well. So it's comparable, at least as far as the text goes, that's uh, what we've seen on Apple devices. So Google has really done a nice job uh, improving that here as well. I also kind of like the screen lock. This is sort of harkening back to what HTC did with Sense. But I do like that you have different options for screen unlocks. This is the one I prefer, where you can swipe over to unlock the phone or jump right out into camera. So I'll go ahead and run on over to that unlock. Uh, the other things that I like, uh, the calendar, for example, I thought was done just really well. Go into Google, and we'll jump into calendar. Uh, if you have a lot of appointments, the pinch to zooming uh, is really helpful. You can zoom in on all those um, and see what it looks like. Just small little tweaks uh, that Google has really paid attention to uh, here. I also really like the Roboto font, and that's sort of, I don't know why I said it like that, Roboto. So weird cadence. Roboto font. And I do like that sort of blue uh, color scheme. All right, so let's talk about some of the stuff that I didn't like about the phone. And just as much stuff as there was that I liked, there's just as much stuff that I didn't like. Uh, and this one goes directly to Samsung. I am not a fan of the build quality uh, on the Galaxy Nexus at all. I think the back feels extremely cheap. Uh, the small plastic panel actually bends a little bit when you push it. And you can see it from the side. You can definitely feel it as you uh, use it. You give it that tap, it feels hollow. Just doesn't feel like a high quality device that it is. Um, that may be a personal preference thing. I know some people prefer the lightness that the plastic provides. Uh, I'm preferential to a more sturdy, perhaps heavier phone that we've seen from manufacturers such as HTC. Um, the plastic on the side, I did drop the phone, it was pretty easy to chip on the GSM model. Um, but they didn't have any cracks or anything. The screen seems to be pretty resilient. But the build quality on the sides and the backs, I think, could definitely uh, be improved. But you're going to want to try the phone and give it a feel. If you've seen a Galaxy S2, this is going to be a very familiar feel to you. So if you like that, 
then you're going to like the Galaxy Nexus. Um, so I mentioned that one of the things I liked was the soft buttons. One of the things I also don't like are the soft buttons. Uh, they take up screen real estate. So on this 4.65 inch screen, you know, a bit, bit of it on the home screen is taken up by those uh, home buttons, which is kind of unfortunate. I would have rather had uh, a full sort of pull down um, of buttons to see. So it's a bit contradictory. I liked having them. I thought they were responsive, but I also didn't like them because they're taking up screen size. Uh, so not sure what the middle ground would be whether or not you want to have capacitive buttons or physical buttons. Uh, but that's just something to keep in mind. You do get this huge giant screen and it is taken advantage of in certain applications, but in some things like the web here, uh, you're not getting that full screen real estate. So small little complaint, uh, but again, that's probably more of a nitpicky personal preference uh, kind of thing. Uh, one of the other things that I didn't like was fragmentation. Some applications just aren't quite made for ice cream sandwich yet. Uh, so you've got sort of quirky menu options. You've got three dots that'll show up where you have to push a menu button. Certainly that's going to change and improve as ice cream sandwich becomes more mainstream and developers have a chance to uh, catch up. Uh, I didn't like the headphone jack on the bottom either. When I went to the gym, I found it a bit cumbersome to have to sort of turn the phone upside down so that headphone jack wasn't facing uh, downwards. Uh, a small sort of minor complaint. Um, and this is a big personal thing for me. And I mentioned this in my first impressions video. Um, I don't like the placement of the home button here on the right-hand side. I know it's in the same place on a lot of other phones, uh, the Galaxy S and the Galaxy S2 line of devices. But in my hands, when I hold it in my left hand like I do and I use my right to touch it, when I hit that power button, it did right there, uh, oftentimes I've got my hands right there on the volume button. You can see that. So as I hit it, sometimes I'll hit and adjust the volume as well. And I was doing that pretty regularly. Now I was able to adjust the way I held the phone, um, but I did find it to be a bit of an annoyance. So one of those things you might want to try the phone uh, first. Another thing is face unlock. Uh, and this is a way to unlock your phone using your face. And I was going to do a whole video demonstration on it, but in keeping things short, um, you can use a picture of yourself to unlock the phone. Um, so if someone takes a picture of you or they can access your Facebook account in some way, uh, they can use that to unlock the phone. So you don't have to use face unlock um, to secure your phone. You can use a pattern or a password and keep it just as secure. I just found it a little bit annoying. I also found face lock as a whole to be a little bit on the annoying side. Uh, but it's nice that you have the option of whether or not you want to use it, um, I suppose. All right, so next let's talk a little bit about camera quality. There's a lot has been said about the five megapixel sensor. Samsung makes some of the best camera sensors on the market and why they chose to go with their lower quality five megapixel sensor as opposed to some of their higher quality um, that they have on other devices. I'm no camera expert is the honest thing. If the picture looks fine, it looks fine. Uh, but I do test a lot of cameras on phones and this one looked very middle of the road, um, not sort of flagship that I would expect. Uh, the next problem that I had was battery life, uh, and that's both on the GSM and the LTE version. Uh, the LTE version, as I mentioned, has a bigger 1,850 milliamp hour battery, but I was burning through battery like crazy. Uh, come 5, 6 o'clock, I had to plug in and the phone was going to die on me. Now that might be because I like a relatively bright screen. I keep my brightness around 70%. When I put that on auto brightness or set it down to be default at 40, I was able to get longer uh, battery life out of it. But LTE is definitely a battery drain and a battery hog. So you might want to consider picking up the extended battery or perhaps a double battery to have to swap in because of course you can replace it uh, on this phone. And now we're getting into some of the more complicated stuff. Uh, the other things I mentioned have been a bit nitpicky uh, and that is setting up a ice cream sandwich device or setting up an Android device as a whole. If you're familiar with Android and you're a bit tech inclined, you're not going to have much of a problem setting this up. It'll be a bit of a breeze. Uh, if, however, you're not incredibly tech savvy and someone gives you an Android device or a carrier sells you an Android device, you're going to have a little bit of a hard time setting this up. Uh, for example, my mother, not tech savvy to say the least. I gave her, actually I factory restored Galaxy Nexus and I gave it to her and I said, try and use this and she could not do it. Uh, it took her almost 45 minutes to try and figure out how to get into the phone she didn't have any sort of Google account set up, so she had to go ahead and do that and to get into the marketplace. My test was to get her to download Angry Birds and to make a phone call, uh, and she had a lot of difficulty. So my mom might not be the most accurate example, but someone who has less of an inclination toward technology is going to find this to have an extremely uh, high learning curve. 
So something to keep in mind in general, not to say that you couldn't get past that learning curve, but it's not intuitive, not as intuitive as other operating systems uh, like iOS or uh, Windows Phone 7. Um, but you can do a lot more with this operating system. Obviously, you can customize it. It's Android. It's open. Um, so sort of two sides uh, of that coin. I would have also really liked to have had Google Wallet. I was really excited to try Google Wallet. No dice on Google Wallet here. Uh, that was a bit uh, flabbergasting. And then also the signal indicator I mentioned earlier. Uh, generally, it's showing me about one bar less of 4G than I had on other 4G devices. All right, so let me go ahead and wrap this up so it doesn't turn into uh, an odyssey. Uh, is this a good phone? Yes, absolutely. It's a great phone. It's probably the best Android phone on the market. I would put this in comparison with the Droid Razor and the HTC Resound uh, as probably the three best uh, Android phones on the market, all of which coincidentally uh, are on Verizon. Uh, developers need to catch up. Developers need to get Ice Cream Sandwich as a default um, operating system to develop for and eliminate some of that fragmentation. Uh, the learning curve uh, is a bit hard for those that aren't uh, tech savvy. For those of you looking to pick up this phone, you're banking a lot on potential, uh, the potential of Ice Cream Sandwich for what it can be and what future versions and upgrades are going to give it. Uh, right now, as it is, you're getting the best version of Android um, that's out there. The tweaks and the attention that Google paid to the tiny things, things like settings or widget placement or you know, soft button location. Uh, you can really see the care uh, that went into that. But I still think you're banking on potential. So are you better off getting the Galaxy Nexus now or getting a device like the Droid Razor that's going to get it uh, in the future with uh, you know, upgrades and perhaps previous version or upgraded versions? Um, that's going to be a tough call. I've actually get asked this question quite a bit. What phone should I get on Verizon? Uh, and generally, I've been recommending uh, the Droid Razor, um, which has been Droid Razor or the HTC Resound. Uh, I think this one still has a little bit of a learning curve uh, with it, and I'm waiting to see one or two software updates that sort of fix some of the small gripes. Uh, that being said, uh, if you want to have the latest and greatest uh, and you are willing to um, wait for some of those updates to come, uh, this is a tremendous device, an absolutely tremendous phone, and those three are really in a three-way tie. Uh, if you decide to go with the Galaxy Nexus, I think you're going to get a great device, but know what you're getting. Uh, try an Android device first. Try the Galaxy Nexus in store. Watch videos like you're doing right now and make an educated um, purchase as a consumer. So do you guys agree, disagree with my positives, negatives? Um, really like to hear what you have to say. Leave your comments down below. Um, for all of your tech news, reviews, hands-on, and in-between, uh, be sure to check us out at technobuffalo.com. I am John Rettinger, and I will see you in the next video.